I'm a sound engineer by, by uh, work, by uh, knowledge, by professional knowledge. I'm still doing the same job. Uh, there is no requirement of changing anything. So what, what is different then? That's the, a good question. Uh, because, I mean, it looks like uh, it, it's pretty much, uh, I mean, there's a cool part, but uh, what about him? So him uh, will, will not be any more defined by specific items. And these specific items are, have been called by uh, uh, Ramesh Balsika, for example, one of my teachers. Um, he called that suffering. Yeah? Suffering is basically uh, specific emotions uh, specific, uh, a specific pain, and so it's a, it's, it's a pain. It could be also a, um, a kind of pleasure. It's, a, it's the opposite, other side of, uh, of the, the pain that brings um, the guy at the center. So that means that assumes that the guy is at the center. So typically, um, it assumes that I did, I did something wrong, so I should be blamed, or I should blame others or um, I should ashamed, be ashamed, or somebody should be ashamed of what they did. did. So this, this is called suffering, and, uh, and doesn't need to be there anymore because there is no root for it. Right? It's, it's the root, when the root is gone, how come this kind of stuff could uh, even appear anymore in, 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 the, in the story because there is no more uh, um, possibility of generating them? The story will not, never generate that because to uh, be ashamed of something, I have to be at the center of the story, decide myself as an individual that I've done something and, uh, and assume that the result that I provoked is my own doing and I, had, uh, uh, to, to, I have to be punished for that. It's very Christian in a way. Um, and this part doesn't, doesn't hold true because uh, this is an object. How can an object be taken of being responsible of anything? At the same time, uh, we talk about uh, the opposite side of, of pain, which could be uh, um, something that we feel is positive. But Ramesh was also pointing that it was actually uh, very much suffering. And for example, there are several examples. Pride is one of them. I'm so proud of what I've done. That's great. I'm so proud I invented this circle to show you. So uh, uh, this is also a suffering. It's just the other side of the coin. <coughs> huh? So the, the suffering that we talk about here is not specifically linked to pain. It could be linked to pleasure. It could be linked to both or whatever. But the root of all this uh, part is this sense of doership, this sense of being separated, this sense of existing as a specific independent entity. And uh, when this is gone, the whole story rewrites itself. It's kind of uh, removing parts of it. Uh, but don't worry, there will be a lot of other parts uh, that are so beautiful that doesn't include this suffering, but that might include pain. Pain is not avoided. That might include uh, pleasure, hopefully. <laughs> and, uh, and that are full of emotions. It's not you know, a kind of a bland, uh, uh, unappealing, um, high state, it is the normal, it is our state, the, the, what we, we know, all of us, it's not different. If you think, because I'm talking here today, that I'm different from what you experience, uh, this is the beginning of creating the separation, it's not. So, so if I'm telling you this state is your experience right now, all of us, because it's all, only different angles, but it's not actual different entities, different people, uh, then you might recognize that uh, and allow that to happen. And the happening is not a real happening because it's, as I put it often, it's to the disappearance, okay, the disappearance of uh, my pretension as the subject of the story, which doesn't exist in the first place. So it's the disappearance of something that doesn't exist. Is it even possible? Any answer? Uh, I got an insight from, from a child uh, story from my childhood where my, my mother tries to convince my little brother that witches doesn't exist. He was dreaming at night and the witch was coming and eating him. 
and the witch doesn't exist, and she tried and tried, and he still dreamed, and it was that's his nightmare. And when uh, one night my father broke in, went out in the yard, smashed a couple of containers, and come back with a broken broom, and told my little brother, the witch is not here. I chased it away. <laughs> And then my brother slept. <laughs> and he could sleep and didn't dream about wishes, but even if he dreamt, he knew my father was strong enough to chase it away. Yeah. And then he grew up, then he matured, and then he stopped believing. So there's like, that there was why I laughed, because there's like, the simple knowledge, it doesn't exist. And then there's, yeah, but how do I do when I'm in the struggle? Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's where you're pointing exactly what we are trying to do here. Yeah. We know, all of us, we know because we have been uh, so touched by this message that this sense of separation, this sense of uh, being alienated from others, from the world, from life itself, is so painful and, and, and is not real. It's a dream. It's a nightmare, actually, not really a dream. Uh, that we, there is a sense of uh, what's what's the solution there to solve the, to heal? It's, it's a healing process, and uh, your story about the witch is beautiful because it illustrates uh, one of the possibility is just um, to use because the in this case it's a bit like R Ramana's story. Uh, if you know you, you heard the most like most of you the thorn story, uh, um, which is actually I'm going to use it as a witch in this case. I'm going, that means it's uh, the, the little uh, your little brother. He had a lot of concepts of thoughts coming about what are, what is a witch, how they come, what they what bad things they can do. So it's a lot of stories. So it's it's all our stories in a way uh, of uh, separation of alienation. So these stories are uh, turning and turning, and there is no way to just say stop it, uh, because uh, it, it cannot attain the, 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 the story of there is a witch, there is a witch. So we take another story, which is not real, which is a story of I have the broom of the witch, and I, I got uh, uh, away, and, I, I, and she's not there anymore. So it's another false story. This is non-duality. It's a false story. It doesn't exist, actually. So I'm doing that, pretending that I'm doing something, and, uh, and telling everybody, uh, uh, well, actually, you don't exist, uh, uh, um, which is another statement that is uh, not real, because th that we, what we are still is very much there. But the first thing you have to say is, you don't exist, because I'm talking to this dream. And um, like I'm, you're talking to your little brother with the witches all around his head and his thinking and his emotional uh, pain. So first talk is, I got rid of the, the witch, you can sleep in. So it's, 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 a, it's a kind of, in a way, it's a kind of lie, but uh, it's, it's, the same, it's the same level as the story. So he has a power on the story. And the story says there are witch. The other story says the witch is gone because I, I chased it. So both stories uh, disappear together. And then the beautiful thing you said, this is exactly what I want to go there, is that what remains is a life without both stories, the story of the witch coming and the witch disappearing. Huh? So that means there is no more possibility of telling a story of duality, of separation, and a story of non-duality, non-separation, because both of them ha has, have, in a way, can sell each other, and life goes on. And your brother is kind of light and, and, and um, going on with his life. Exactly that. That's what we're doing today. As simple as that. I like the story of the witch, because it was like the habitual imaginings keep creating the illusory witch. Yeah. I'm going to use this story, if you allow me to do, in the future. I'll, I'll give you the copyright. <laughs> <laughs> it's for you to use. Thank you very much. So w from this uh, standpoint, you are not the doer. Yeah. Who is not the doer? 
can you put because this is on the on the post-it right you Im imagine a yellow post-it you write i am not the doer yeah. where do you stick it So maybe it's not really useful, because I am not the doer is, is a, a great realization in a sense that it brings a lot of uh, lightness, as I said before, and, and, and somehow uh, acceptance yeah. and, and clarity and, uh, and all that. But it's still a, a kind of a manipulation of the non-dual message to get something for yourself. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So you get, in a way, uh, you have a better life. Yeah. And, um, but I'm not criticizing that, no, huh? you understand? So, so maybe the, the I'm not taking, saying it's in the next step, but the possibility is that with this understanding to uh, try to explore that if a uh, somebody is not defined by any specific features, whether you know in terms of shape, form, uh, thinking, and uh, and the decision process, that means that you're not deciding anything. Is there still Somebody there is that is there still? Yeah. So that's that's that becomes clear, no? Yeah. So and staying with that is it is it a, um, a, a painful process or staying with that this simplicity? So it's a good thing, let's explore together if really there's a little me. Because if, what I, if, you, trust, if you trust what I'm telling you, um, the little me is, is that, yeah. okay? But it's not anymore the subject of the story, yeah. okay? So that's the, the understanding when all um, illusions and uh, identifications I mean, have gone, and that seems to be a big thing, but it, it doesn't need to be um, understood as a big thing. It's a small thing. It's just saying uh, uh, and realizing that uh, this story that you're telling is just happening there within what you are, which is not localized, which is not localized in time and space, which is before whatever happens here, and at the same time, which is not different from what is happening here. But it has nothing with, to do with a specific location here, or inside the body, or, or behind the eyes, and, and whatever. It's the totality of all elements that pretend to create a 3D situation uh, in space, and a 4D with time, and that says, well, there is something outside now. There was something in the past, and there's going to be something in the future, uh, or there is something just outside, uh, I know, I know the, the ashram and ashram, I've been there in the morning, it's there. So all these are suppositions that are basically uh, creating a sense of localization, saying, so I'm existing at a specific time and specific space. And that's again, a sense of being at the center, even if the center uh, is felt to, to be defined of any, um, any feature, but, would it not be a, a possibility, I'm not saying I have to force anything, that this so-called center doesn't really exist, it's more like a virtual point, uh, a, a specific point of view in, in manifestation, in the infinite. Yes, because when you say, uh, then I know the, the ashram is there. Yeah, I know it, but only if I go there. Exactly. So uh, it's not there when I, uh, when I sit here with the stairs, it's not there. It's only there if I go there. Exactly. Uh, and that's the way, you know, yeah. we play. So I'm using, well, that's a long exploration to, to talk about this time and space, and uh, maybe we can do that tomorrow for, for the, the one who are interested. But uh, the, the, what my, what my point is that this sense of being at the center of, of the story is uh, based on many assumptions. Eh? And one of the assumptions is this uh, feeling, and it's, it, it doesn't uh, uh, really... Um, it doesn't need to be taken as the enemy. I mean, it's uh, just to look at it 
feeling of being located somewhere in the story and having two sides of the story, uh, the inner side and the outer side. Where is the boundary? How do you define the boundary? What, what is the boundary made of? Can you pinpoint it? Can you show it to me? Can anybody show it to me? So if there is no inside and outside, um, is it not what I'm, I'm showing you here? That means the so-called outside and so-called inside are, is actually our true nature, our base camp, our ground of being. So that within that story, uh, which is popping out, uh, uh, popping out of nowhere, uh, there's still a, s a dude called Didier that is popping out and, and uh, seemingly talking to other people, which are not other people. I don't, it's not my experience. I don't see any other people here. There is just this happening all the time, and that's the only possibility. And then there is a pretending, and sometimes a forgetfulness, that suddenly associates one side of the story, puts boundary, the inner side, and the outer side, and says, I'm here, located, very much separated from everybody else, and uh, in a way uh, so fragile, because it's, it's there's no um, no protection. Uh, there is, it, it's, it, it is the world crushing us as separate entities. Yeah, yeah. So guilt. So that's what we, we talked about. But the guilt is related to the sense of doership. That means uh, I have a total control of my life or partial control of my life. That's another exploration we can do together um, to. Uh, see if uh, at some point this um, there is a gradation because some they say well I'm partly in charge because I can see that I don't I don't choose a lot of stuff things are coming to me and uh, the rickshaw he came I I didn't know it, it was that one were coming and it came late and uh, uh, so you start blaming the rickshaw also and etc so there is a seemingly some elements that are coming from outside that are not in your control and some element that you can control like calling the rickshaw. And, uh, and, uh, and getting the things happening. But then if you start exploring this uh, specific angle, you will start maybe at 50-50. I, I did that with Ramesh, actually, yeah, for, for some time, negotiating, <laughs> fish market, saying, well, OK, it's not 100%, uh, but it's 50-50. And then you uh, say, OK, 60-40, then 90-10. Then at the end, uh, I mean, at the end, I said 99-1. Uh, 99, I'm not in charge. 1%, uh, yes, there is something, the little thing there. And then after several months, I just gave up, actually. That was, uh, <laughs> that was ridiculous, because it was just fish market. Because that's the exploration from Ramesh. That, that means at the end of your day, uh, when um, everything is said and done, and you're relaxed, and he was uh, advising an, a nice glass of wine uh, to relax even more, um, or whiskey, I don't, know, I don't remember exactly, but something. He was actually uh, um, proposing to explore one of the uh, specific events in our day that would prove, that would 100% prove that you, you yourself, as a se separate person, took yourself a decision. And then uh, by exploring that, at the beginning, oh, this, I know, I, that's my decision. And then you start uh, looking at the, what is called the dependencies, why this decision came? Oh, it came because of this, because of that, because, okay, so it was not 100% my decision, but still. And then you go, and then you can see that everything in the universe, in the so-called universe, was a conspiracy for this decision to be happening. Okay? So, and, and, and uh, kind of uh, leaving behind uh, this sense of doership is a pain, can be a painful thing. Because, yeah, that's, that's the motivation to wake up in the morning, to go out of bed. But then here we, we've seen that it's just a step. 
because from I am not the doer of action, of any action, there is a, this possibility of jump to, it's a quantum leap to this I, this small I that is not in charge of any action, is not defined by anything anymore because the physical shape changes all the time. The thoughts, they come, they go, the knowledge comes and go, the emotions comes and go. There's nothing stable. And even the so-called sense of uh, the center of decision is gone. So uh, this little me, what I call a little me, um, is devoid of anything that would actually qualify a, a little me, would, would a, a create a little me. So the conclusion that comes, if it's seen deeply, 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 is, is there really a little me? Or is it just a dream? A dream of a little me? Yeah, because there is still uh, a specific angle, still a specific uh, um, uh, flavor, like vanilla, chocolate, and, and all that, still a specific appearance. But where does that come from? And made of, if it's not that, we are already. So we don't need to become. Didier doesn't become the totality. That's, there's no way for Didier to, uh, to even awaken or, or to have a, a so he, through this channel, through the, within your story, there might be some information that just going to be reminders saying, hey, hey, uh, stop dreaming that you are this dude or this dude that's at the center. S because life is happening and it's so beautiful and it's not different from yourself. And this is already what, because you said it's not what I'm experiencing, but that's, that belief is the, is the lock. How do you know it's not what you're experiencing right now? Because you add stuff. You, because you add layers of identification. But he, without these layers, without... Uh, Raggy was uh, yesterday did a, 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 a... No, it was not yesterday, some, some time ago, was doing uh, this nice exercise. Oh, it was yesterday, about um, uh, who are you uh, if you're not using your memory, if you're not using anything from the past, from uh, all the definitions you have been accumulating, who are you? And then we were doing uh, by two people by two people like that. And then if you don't dig up into the big uh, um, container of past memories, um, actually, there is no way to know. There is just this presence that all of us. Is somebody not here? OK? That we agree on that presence, existence. There is something. We don't know what it is, but there is something. Presence, existence. Um, awareness, because without awareness, we, nothing will, will ev even be known. So it's basically presence knowing itself. It's a kind of a mirror effect. Okay? So, s and then, uh, is not that as simple? Um, such a relief, such a peace, actually. It's that's the ananda part. So we have sat, chit, ananda, being, Awareness, peace, and on that. Without memory, that's all what it is, actually. And then, the good news is the memory can come back. But such is always there. The, the ground being is always here. Presence is always here. <laughs>